Okay, in this video, I want to talk about the intuition behind a concept in combinatorics, basically a concept in a partition theory, uh, which says that uh, for a positive integer n, the number of uh, positive integer solutions to, to this equation, which, which has uh, the variables a1, a2, ar, which are being added up, and uh, they sum to give you, uh, the sum that they give is uh, this uh, positive integer n. So, so uh, uh, what is required is to find the number of positive integer solutions to this equation. And uh, according to this concept, it is uh, the formula says that it is nothing but uh, this combinatoric uh, uh, expression, which says uh, n minus 1 choose uh, r minus 1. And uh, th there are some people who write it like this, who write uh, n minus 1 choose uh, r minus 1. These are, these are just notations. But uh, yeah, many people are confused about where, where does this uh, minus 1 come from. So, so I, I'll uh, talk about the intuition behind this uh, using an example. So, so an example that I would like, like to take is, uh, let's say you have three variables x, y, and z, uh, and uh, they sum to give you five, and you are interested in finding the number of positive integer solutions to this. So, so uh, I, uh, one way is to use the formula that we have, but uh, since we want the intuition behind this formula, we'll uh, we'll uh, do this uh, using brute force. And and uh, the way to think about this is. Uh, Let's say you have a, a total of uh, five balls, five identical balls, which uh, I've illustrated over here, and and you want to you want to partition them uh, among uh, three uh, let's say three children. Let's say X Y Z are three children, and uh, uh, the condition is that uh, each child uh, should uh, get at least uh, one of these balls. So so that's that's actually the condition of the uh, X Y and Z being uh, positive integers. Otherwise. Uh, if, if there was a child who wouldn't uh, get any toy, then that would be a value of zero, which which wouldn't be a positive integer. So so the uh, so the uh, premise is that uh, you have five identical toys, identical balls, which are to be distributed uh, among uh, three children such that each gets uh, at least one. So at least one of the balls. So so this uh, finding number of integer solutions to this is as good as uh, finding the solutions to this. Uh, uh, problem of uh, giving uh, these balls to the three children so so you can uh, think of it uh, using a partition so uh, I, I actually uh, I can uh, make up a partition uh, using uh, one of these uh, pins which I have what what happens is uh, when you have uh, five balls I can partition them using this partition so so when I when I put this partition over let's say here then this uh, distributes uh, my set of five balls into two groups. So one group is of uh, two balls and the other group is of uh, three balls. Uh, so, so yeah, so you can see that uh, using one partition, I can make uh, two groups. And uh, if, if I wanted to make uh, three groups, I, I would uh, use uh, two, two partitions. So I would, I would use another pin to demonstrate uh, another partition. And uh, yeah, this is this is actually where uh, this uh, r minus one comes from. If if you want to make uh, r groups, uh, you choose uh, r minus one partition. So here I wanted to make three uh, three partitions, three groups basically. So I, I used uh, two two uh, partitions to make the three groups. So so yeah, and uh, now now comes the question of where these uh, partitions can be placed. And uh, if if you look, if you I remove this uh, partition. Uh, you'll realize that I can put the partitions only in the gaps that are uh, created uh, between these uh, tall between these uh, balls. Uh, the reason I cannot put it over here is uh, let's say I put it over here one partition and I put one partition over here. This this uh, this shows that uh, the first uh, the first shell will get uh, two balls, the second shell will get uh, three balls, but the third shell won't get any balls. So this is this is a condition that is being violated. You, there is a child which is getting no balls. And we won't. We don't want that. So we want uh, every child to get at least one ball. So so the only way uh, to satisfy that is to put these partitions in the gaps that are created in between. And and uh, if you realize that uh, if there are five balls, then there are four gaps that are created in between. So that's where this uh, uh, n minus one comes from. So if, if so, what you have is you have four gaps and you have uh, two partitions. And uh, you can put uh, uh, these two partitions in any of those four gaps. Uh, each uh, uh, arrangement will give you a new uh, new solution. So so uh, yeah, that that's actually the intuition behind this. And what I want to do is I want to actually demonstrate uh, this uh, with the complete listing of the possibilities. From from the uh, formula, uh, the answer here will come out to be if I were to write it like this. 
here my n is 5 so n minus 1 would be a 4 4 choose and I have 3 variables so uh, r minus 1 uh, if I have 3 variables r is 3 and r minus 1 will be 2 and uh, from uh, basic uh, combinatorics we know that uh, 4 choose 2 is uh, nothing but uh, 6 so there are actually 6 ways of uh, distributing these uh, 5 balls among 3 children such that uh, each uh, child gets uh, at least one ball and I'll actually demonstrate that uh, using these partitions. So let's say I put the partitions over here. So in this case uh, the first child gets one ball, the second child gets one ball and the third child gets uh, three balls. So if I were to list down the possibilities, I would write it over here. I would say uh, x, uh, okay let me, let me not put it over here, let me put it over here, x, y and z. The first child gets 1, the second child gets 1 and the third child gets 3. If I were to change my partition to this, then the first child gets 1, second child gets 2 and the third child gets 2 again. If I were to shift my partition over here, the first child gets 1, the second child gets 3, these are the 3 balls that the second child gets and the third child gets 1. Now, if I were to change my partition to, let's say this, in that case, the first child gets 2, the second one gets 1, and the third one gets 2. Now, if I were to shift this over here, the first child gets 2, the second child gets 2, and the third child gets 1. And lastly, if I were to put the partitions like this, the first child gets 3 balls, the second child gets one ball and the third child gets uh, one ball and indeed if you look carefully these are uh, one two three four five six six possibilities of distributing the balls so yeah the, uh, these are the, this is actually the brute force method of finding all the possibilities but if you realize that uh, uh, when the number of balls increases or when the number of children increases then this becomes uh, very tedious to do so that's that's where uh, this formula comes into play this, this is the concept of uh, partition theory which says that uh, the number of positive integer solutions to this equation is uh, nothing but uh, n minus 1 choose uh, r minus 1 where n is the total that you are getting and uh, r is uh, the number of uh, variables.